Hi, this year in March I was on the Embedded World, an exhibition for everything related to embedded systems. While I was there I visited the Furlings booth. So Furlings is a company building system on modules, evaluation boards for them and industrial PCs. Last year I already got one evaluation board from Furlings and this year I got this nice looking board here which I will present to you in today's video. So today we will take a look at the Forlinks OK3588-C board. So let me turn on the, off the camera and let's switch the desktop. So here I have the hardware manual for the OK3588 board. If you want to have this hardware manual or the SDKs which are needed to build software for this board, you have to contact Forlinks and then they will send this board to you. So basically the evaluation board consists of two parts. So first, so this is how it looks like. So on here we have the system on a module and this system on the module is plugged on a carrier board and this carrier board connects all the peripherals to the system on a module. But let's start by taking a look at the system on a module. So basically here we have the chip with the main processor. This is a rock chip RK3588 chip. Then here we have two DRAM ICs. We have an EMC storage for non-volatile data. And this chip down here and all these um, parts are used for generating the various voltages a chip needs for operation. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the rock chip RK3588. And this one is a real power horse. So here you can see the block diagram of the RK3588 and here we can see it has a dual cluster core. And in this dual cluster core we have a quad core Cortex A76 processor clocked at 2.6 GHz and we have a second cluster with a Cortex A55 quad core processor or processors I think clocked at 1.5 or 1.5. 8 gigahertz. So yeah, this is a very powerful setup and I think for power saving it is possible maybe to turn off the A76 cores and if you want to have full performance you can, you can turn them off ag uh, on again. So this is a really cool feature. Another interesting feature is this high performance neural processing unit. So if you want to run any task related to our artificial intelligence or machine learning on this board, this MPU will give you some hardware to do this. And yeah, this is a really nice feature. Maybe one day I can show a small demo um, where I can demonstrate the usage of this MPU. This, this would be cool. We also have a multimedia processor in here with um, various video D and encoders, even an AK, which is really good. And we have a Mali GPU embedded in here. So for the external memory interfaces, we have two EMMC controllers built into the chip and we have a controller for low power DDR4 or low power DDR5. And then we have a set of the normal um, system peripherals, maybe some of the important here, we have two USB on the go 3.1 um, yeah, interfaces. We have up to two PCI Express interfaces or up to three PCI Express interfaces. We have two times gigabit Ethernet and all the standard peripherals like GPIOs, SBI, I2C, and so on and so forth. So yeah, this chip is really looking good. So now let's take a look what we have on the carrier board. So here we have an image of the carrier board and let's go over the, yeah, the peripherals. So here we have a 12 volt power supply. So first I tried to use this board with a 12 volt and 500 milliampere power supply, but this was not enough for the board. So currently I'm using a 800 milliampere power supply and with this it's working just fine. Here we have a power switch to turn the um, yeah, board on and off. We have a reset and an on off switch here. We have up to five camera connectors, which is really cool. We have a microphone. Um, yeah, connectors for speakers, for a headphone. Here we have a USB 2.0 host. And here we have two, our two USB 3.1 on the go ports. So when we're plugging a device into these ports, um, 
yeah, they can either act as normal a normal USB host, but they can also act like a USB device, depending on what you need. Then we have two HMI um, yeah, ports. One is an input port and one is an output port. Here we have a real-time clock and a battery for it. Here we have an e-display port output and e-display port power, a connector for five ADCs, a connector for 3.3 volts. Here we have a SD card slot, then a fan connector. This slot you can place in an M.2 card for Wi-Fi. And this is really cool. On this board we also have two um, yeah, real-size PCI Express connectors. One can go up to PCI Express 3 um, by 4 and the other one is PCI Express 2 by 1. And here we have some user buttons and here we have two CAN interfaces and one RS485 interface. And here we have a USB to your adapter and a USB connector to get access to the serial terminal or to serial console of the sport. And we have two times gigabit Ethernet ports. So the board setup is really nice. Let's also look at the bottom side. Here we have another M.2 slot for an optional yeah, 4G or 5G card. We have two MIPI display connectors and we have a SIM card slot. So yeah, this board is really looking, looking nice. So as a next step, let's turn the board on. And you can see I have also plugged in a PCI card into a free PCI slot and let's see if we can detect this card here. Oh, and but maybe before I start it, let, let's open my serial terminal so we can actually see the output. Okay, so the board is starting. The kernel is starting. And now we've successfully booted. So in here, I think we are just running a, yeah, a busy box root file system, so quite minimal. But hey, for a, for a first look, it's okay. In a future video, I want to show you how to build an own custom Linux for this board. But for today, this busy box rootfs will, will be suitable, just fine. Okay, so maybe first, let's take a look which kernel we are running. And here we are running kernel 5.10.66. And yeah, here we have the build date. And the kernel is built for AR64. Yeah, well, this is no surprise. Okay, so let's take a look at the processors. So you can see we have eight processors available here. Here we can see the various features of the processor. And one thing you can take a look at is here we have a CPU part and this is D0B for four processors and D05 for the other four processors. So we can see here we are, our system consists of eight Cortex-A processors, but they are two different kinds. Okay, so let's see how much memory I have available here on my board. And here I have 3.6 gigabytes of memory available and currently I'm using 155 megabytes. I think there are some background processes which take this memory. And yeah, I think on my system on a module, maybe we, there is four gigabytes of memory available, but I think some of the memory is also used for the Mali GPU. Okay, so what else do we have here? So let's run I2C detect to see which I2C interface we have on the system. So we have up to um, yeah, eight I2C buses available here. And you can see these are free to use and one is connected to the display, to a display connector. So DDC stands for data or display data channel, which is used to, mon um, to manage monitors basically. Okay, so let's take a look at the device folder here and let's see if we have something interesting. So this MMC block zero is our eMMC storage because here on my board I haven't plugged in an SD card. So this is really booting off this eMMC here. And we can see the eMMC has quite a lot of partitions. Then we have seven GPIO chips available. So also quite a lot of GPIOs. Here we can see our um, eight um, I2C connect or eight I2C um, 
buses which are available. And yeah, th I think that's basically it. Okay, the last thing I want to do is, you can see I've connected a PCI Express card, so let's run a less PCI and see if it can detect this card. Yeah, and here we go. So, this, the card with this vendor device ID is the card I've plugged in here, and if I take a look at this, bus, PCI, devices, and passing this number here, yeah, you can see this PCI device actually has three bars, and let's see at which speed it's running. Um, current uh, link speed. So it's currently running at PCI um, Gen 1. And the current link width is should be by 1 also because the card only supports this. But if I would have a better card, we could get uh, current, uh, we could get link speeds up to 8 gigatransaction per, per second in a link width up to 4, which is quite cool. Okay, so I guess, yeah, that's a first quick demonstration or presentation of the OK3588 board. In a future video, I will also compile some software for it. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed the video. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.